Hi guys, another Dermatology video here. I hope you find this useful. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment so you get more videos pop up like this on your feed. So this video is all about ulcers, the three main types of ulcers that you may come across in medical exams, from pictures, from examining patients, etc, etc. There's three main types to think about. You have your venous ulcers, your arterial ulcers, and your neuropathic ulcers. So we'll start with venous ulcers first. Why do they happen? Because of venous insufficiency or venous hypertension. There may all be a story of things like varicose veins, DVT in the past, surgery, trauma around the area. Often there's something that's been happening around the area before. And the edge is quite irregular. It's not a classic, like, punched out, really well-defined edge. It can be quite a, um, a shape, shaped, strange shaped, irregular edge. And the, and the actual ulcer is quite shallow. It doesn't go too deep, usually, if it's a venous type. Where do you get them? Normally on the gator region, so the medial part, I can't show you, medial part of your lower leg, as opposed to the lateral side, and usually around that shin area, um, that sort of level. In terms of examination, it's normally quite a warm area, a warm foot, because the arterial system is working quite well, so the blood supply is good, so you get it quite warm. And things like the ABPI, or the ankle break, your pressure index is normally normal because your arterial system is working quite well. But you may get other signs of venous insufficiency and venous hypertension, like skin changes, you know, hemocytorin, that kind of stuff can also happen. Arterial ulcers, why do they happen? Because of arterial insufficiency, there's a problem with the arterial supply of the lower leg. So you may get a history of things like intermittent claudication, walking when you get, uh, sorry, pain when you walk certain distances, and also there may be a smoker, classic things that you may get in the psychosocial history. They appear a lot more well-defined, so almost like a punched out appearance, very well-defined edge, as someone's gone in, punched an area out and pulled it out, um, and it's clearly different to a venous ulcer in terms of the, what you will see. In terms of where do you get them, normally on the lateral side of the ankle as opposed to the medial side of the leg, and they can be on the other bony prominences as you go down the foot as well. It's usually very, very painful, which fits in with the arterial insufficiency type of nature. And the skin can change, it's quite pale, it can be quite shiny. Um, on the surface, you can lose hair, for example. ABPI is quite low because of the arterial system being poor, and you may find it difficult to palpate pulses, your distal ones, your DP, your distalis pedis, or your PT, your posterior tibial. Then you have neuropathic ulcers now. If you get a purely neuropathic ulcer, for example in diabetes, then you get key features, but you can get mixes between arterial and neuropathic, which can make it quite difficult to differentiate. But if it's purely neuropathic, you may get a neuropathic symptom history. So burning around the area, decreased sensation, paresthesia, for example. They're usually quite punched out as well, but they can go very deep because the sensation is quite poor. So maybe you don't realize that it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's why you need to, um, quite nasty infections, osteomyelitis, not picked up because of, there's no pain, there's no sensation around there. So it can present quite late. They tend to happen around the pressure points, so the heel area, um, and the bony problems are down the foot where you may have got a history of knocking something in the past, not realizing because you didn't feel the pain because you knocked it, you cut it and then you develop an ulcer around that. So pressure points are the areas to look for. You may get neurological signs, so sensation might be down, for example, you might get other neurological features when you examine. There can be other signs, like things like callus that you may get in diabetic feet, for example. I've got another video on diabetic foot examination which goes through those kind of features. And if there's no arterial input, then it's gonna be quite a warm area around it, and you may get normal ankle brachial pressure indexes, as opposed to an arterial where it might be quite cold because your arterial system is affected. So three types of ulcers to think about venous, arterial, and neuropathic. We're going to do another video talking about the main treatments, but hopefully this helps in terms of presentation, history, examination, and what kind of things to look out for on images in exams. Hope this is helpful. Can pass, will pass. Hashtag, I went with Aurora.